Hi, sweet friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing some decorating and a little bit of cleaning over in our small entryway. Since the space is small, I'll be sharing some tips and tricks on how I like to make the space a little bit larger, brighter, cozy, and inviting. If you are new, hi, my name is Amy and welcome here to Simply Our Home. If you enjoy what you see today, I hope that you would consider subscribing and I would love if you would hit that thumbs up button for me. That really does help me out. Now, as far as today goes, we're going to be doing some cleaning, primarily on our floors. I need to mop the wood floors in our entryway space. I haven't did that for quite some time. And I also just bought a new Hoover carpet cleaner. So I want to refresh and clean the carpet on our staircase. We'll also be decorating some tabletop surfaces, adding some decor to a wall hook. I'll be replacing our front door rug and adding a new mirror. So hopefully this video will be filled with tons of decorating inspiration and cleaning motivation as well. So we have lots to do today, but I'll definitely share my thought processes and any hiccups that we may face. All right, friends, well, let's go ahead and get started. I hope you enjoy. Starting off today, I've already taken the mirror off the wall in preparation for the new one that will hang later on once we get the floors vacuumed and mopped. Since I'll be replacing this small rug with a larger carpet runner, I'm going to go ahead and move out the cabinet along with the rug so that I can thoroughly clean behind and around the cabinet where dust can settle. After the long and tedious job of refinishing our hardwood floors, I really try to limit the amount of water that I use when I mop. Now we know that mopping is important for just sanitizing and removing allergens like pet dander and dust. So what I like to do is use this mop that I got off of Amazon. I love that it has a removable washable pad. I like to run it under some piping hot water, wringing it out almost completely dry. My favorite wood cleaner is this one by Method. It is super quick and convenient. You just squirt it on in an S pattern, and then I start to mop back and forth. And I like to end going in the same direction as the wood grain. And let me tell you that almond scent that lingers is just so fresh and clean smelling. Quickly, before I start carpet cleaning, I want to definitely go over the carpet with this attachment, which is kind of like an upholstery attachment. Get all the hair, dust, and dirt, because even with that, I'll probably have lots of buildup, and that can really clog your machine. So I'm going to go over all of the carpet first with this, and a tip I have for you, if you have stairs like I do, in the fold between the tread and the riser, there is always a collection of hair and dirt. And so what I like to do is take a microfiber cloth, wet it with just water, and then take that over your corners, and that's gonna drag up all the dust and hair, and then you can just vacuum that away as you go. So that's what I'm gonna be doing, and that's gonna get rid of most of that before I start putting water and soap to it, and we'll see how that goes. Never felt tomorrow closing in this fast. Oh, I guess time's in a rush. Leaves are falling down, but 
like for a corner, I believe. This is just the solution, like it's a little trial size solution. But I think I'm going to be using my Bissell. This is another little gadget. Here's another little carpet clean compliments. Carpet clean formula booster pet odor, odor eliminator. So 25% more effective than solution alone. That's kind of nice. And then here is the machine itself. Okay, so here it is up a little bit closer. It does have a quick start guide here. I like the shape of it. The size is not too, too big. The hose is nice and flexible. Now this isn't sponsored at all. I totally bought all of this with my own money. And so up close, here's what the brushes look like. Here's that corner one that I was telling you about. So there's that one. And then this one has like little rubbery things. So that will be nice. And then here is the little solutions that came with it. But as far as today goes, I'm going to be using this solution. It has always did great for us. And so I'm just going to use this inside of our Hoover and get this started real quick and get our stairs clean and then move on to some decorating. Of course, it is electric. We could have gotten one that was battery operated, but I just went with the corded one. And then right here is a hose rinse tool. So that'll go on the end of the hose there at the end, and then you will rinse it once you're finished. So, all right. These things kind of intimidate me. I don't know why, <laughs> but if I can do it, I know you can, and I'll let you know how I think it works. So here is the hose and the attachment that I'll be using for the stairs. And then you just click it in. And then I guess you push the button here to spray. This you will scrub with, and then you'll suck with the back. Leaves are falling down, but at least they grow back. While I'm on a one-way track. Now I
This is the water after going halfway down the stairs. So yuck, definitely gross, needed to be cleaned. But I'm going to be able to do the stairs with two refills. So I think that does pretty good for a small little area. And so far, I think this little guy works really well. I think he's well worth the price. I'll have him linked down below in the description box so you can easily shop there and get one for yourselves. So here is what the stairs look like now that they are nice and clean and very fresh smelling may I add. This wall right next to the front door is the perfect place to hang a mirror. However, since we have this light switch that has five switches on it, it makes the hanging of the mirror a little bit tricky. So in order to hang the mirror so that it doesn't disrupt the light switch, I have to hang it a lot higher than you typically want to, which is six to eight inches above a table or sofa, things like that. Design rules are suggestions in my book, and you can definitely break them if necessary. And I'm going to do that right here in our small entryway. So this mirror did come with a really nice level line. It tells you where to drill your holes. It actually did come with screws and anchors, but my hubby chose to use these monkey hooks. Most things work perfectly, but I'll show you here in a second. It's not a good idea to use these. He actually owes me a mirror. So I'm just warning you in advance. Don't hang this with monkey hooks. Don't do it as I do. Do as I say. <laughs> so use what they provide and you'll be perfectly fine. But what it did was actually scratch the inside of the mirror. So now you can see little scratches from the front of the mirror. Right now, I'm not going to worry about it. You know how I change my decor often. So I'm just going to keep it as is for now. We may replace it here in a few months, but I'm just going to deal with it. I might look into ways to repurpose that or even try to fix that. So you'll have to stay tuned. So I'm gonna grab that mirror and get it up here on the wall. I definitely wanna keep a mirror in the space so that one, we can take a look at ourselves before we leave the house or before we invite guests in. And two, it instantly makes our space feel larger as well as brightens the area here by reflecting light. Now that I have the mirror in place, I love the gold frame. It kind of sticks out a little bit here, like it has a lip, so it goes back in there. I love it, but let me just show you the little scratches right here. If you can see, that is from scratching the paper on the back side with a monkey hook. So definitely don't do that. Use your anchor. Well, friends, you might have guessed what rug I decided to go with. Well, it's another Lenoir rug in the same Layla collection. I just love them in the kitchen, so I decided to go with a matching one to put here at the front door. To make sure that the rug doesn't slip and slide around, I'm adding these grippers for rugs. I really like them, and I'm going to add them to all four corners, and then we'll pull back in the entryway cabinet and I'll share with you how I'm going to remedy the large space between the cabinet and mirror by adding larger decor pieces. Thank you. 
Now to fill in that awkward space, as well as to add another source of light, I'm coming in with this absolutely gorgeous lamp from the Studio McGee line at Target. At first, I was a little bit unsure of its size. I thought it might be a little too big. This cabinet is pretty narrow so that it does fit into our entryway, but I decided to just go with it. It does have a little space in front, and if I don't like it in the months to come, I can always swap in another one from another area in our home. Next, I'm coming in with a coffee table book, and then on top of that, I'm coming in with a faux plant to give the space a little bit of greenery and life. Now, I wish I had a green thumb, but I just don't, so these realistic versions from Target really fit the bill. Over the wall hooks, I'm bringing in two wall decor pieces that I picked up from Hobby Lobby last year. Inside the dark frame, I love the linen-like material printed with birds, lending to a more high-end look. Plus, I love that one says, stay a while, while the other one says, happy here. Those are perfect sayings for an entryway. Now to style the hooks. Now, since we do have a coat closet to the left, I feel it's okay to go ahead and use this piece as a decor piece rather than use it as a functional one. I added those gold keys that I picked up from Hobby Lobby last spring, I believe. I added a really nice blanket that is lightweight and brings in just a soft and cozy feel and then inside the basket that I got from Joann's I don't believe it's any longer available I'm just filling it with those Norfolk pine stems along with these jasmine stems that kind of resemble snow but then they can also look like new buds for the spring so I think it's perfect for this time once I get this arranged how I like, we can move on to pulling back in the entryway table. And I have an idea of tweaking the sconces just a bit that are above it so that we have a different look. These specific ones can be installed like we have them, or you can rotate them 180 degrees and have them displayed with a glow facing downward. So I'm going to give this a try and see if I like it. And then if I do, we're going to go ahead and flip around the other one for a quick and easy change. You'll have to let me know which side you like the best. I actually really like the look of the downward facing light and I think this is going to help us to draw attention to the entryway table. So as far as the actual light goes, we don't have any electricity to these. I typically use the rechargeable lights, but in all honesty, they go dead very quickly. So I picked up this set of puck lights from Amazon. I really like that you just put three AAA batteries in them and they also come on a remote. And since I need a light that is actually going to stick up there, these actually have like little sticky pads that I can put on the back and attach it then to the light inside. Now it does have a remote, like I said, it comes with different settings. You can set it at 10%, 40%, 80%, and 100. But I just really love the warm glow of these. And so I think they will work perfectly here in the entryway. For those of you who might be new, I thought I would quickly explain this little wooden piece. Because of our board and batten and the way that it sticks out from the wall, it makes hanging an artwork piece very difficult. So my hubby took two pieces of wood securing them together that are the exact size of the overhang. To attach it to the wall, I just used two Velcro command strips. And to further secure the artwork piece, I inserted a screw at the top in the middle to hold the picture wire in place. This little hanger is genius and has made all the difference. 
I can link this canvas print as well as a video where I added the brush strokes with Mod Podge to create a more vintage, authentic painting down in the description box so you can take a look if you'd like. If you remember my last home decor haul, I shared this gorgeous vessel that I picked up from Home Goods. Inside it, I'm adding these very sparse leaved branches that I think are perfect for the end of winter, beginning of spring. Since the entryway table isn't super long, I'll balance the opposite side by adding two coffee table books. And then I'll repeat the dark color by topping the books with this dark stained handle bowl, along with a couple of wooden candle holders that both came from the store at home. Then to create a sense of coziness, I'm adding these battery operated flameless flickering taper candles with a honeycomb texture that are absolutely gorgeous. To the bottom of the entryway table, I want to switch it up just a bit. I'm only going to be bringing back one of the boat baskets from Walmart and then to the other side. Instead, I'm switching it up by adding a group of two black lanterns that are also from Walmart. And again, I think this just makes the space feel super cozy by adding different layers of lighting. The final touch is to add a cozy throw blanket inside of the boat basket, and that will complete today's decorating here in our small entryway. Hopefully I've achieved a look and feel that is a lot more cozy and inviting and maybe even looks brighter and larger than how the room started out today. Alright sweet friends, well that pretty much wraps up today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it did give you some decorating inspiration for your entryways as well as some cleaning motivation. As always, let's go ahead and turn to God's Word as we end our time together. Today I'm going to be reading from Psalm 145 verse 8. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. Well, I thank you so much for watching and spending your day with me. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you real soon in my next one. Take care, and God bless, friends. Bye!